It is day nine of November and the prompt is museum. This might be the second time in a row where I have a shitty microphone. You're going to have to live with it. I decided what would be more museum-like than an artifact, and I decided on a broken pot. So in Blender, you know the drill, make our cube a geonodes object. And to make a pot, you can basically think of this as a profile that we rotate about a z-axis. And the reason I'm picking a cylinder is because it's already like radially symmetric. It's like the closest object to what we want. Only thing I want to modify here is this top should not be here. So you can reach into the pot, delete geometry by faces, only the top face, we want to distort its profile, which will require more vertical segments. So with the side segment, I'm gonna bring it up to like 30. We can change it later. Vertices, I'm gonna bring up to 64. Basically, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be expanding and contracting the cylinder on the XY plane, everything except Z, a set position. And we want to offset this by the position vector, except we want it to basically negate the Z axis. So I'm gonna multiply by one, one, zero. And for our function, I wanna make sure that it's something we can control easily. So I'm gonna use an RGB curves. This is gonna be on the X and the y-axis, again, z is equal to zero. We want to do this as we ascend vertically. Connect z to the color, and that should almost work, except we have a depth of two, which means that the cylinder is going from negative one to one. It has a height of two. I'm going to map range from negative one to one to zero to one. But something that's very nice is we get this like flat base here, which would be accurate of a pot since it needs to stand up. Either way, what I'm saying is we can take this RGB curves and literally just draw the shape of our pot. So I'm going to do a curve here, maybe like a curve over here to have a nice rounded base. So I like this shape, but it's like two wide for my liking. So instead of kind of like changing everything here, we can just do a final processing step, a multiplication, which you can think of as like a scaling parameter for this. Okay, something that might work a bit better and kind of only require single parameters, just changing this radius, which will make it thinner. And then our multiplication can be kind of the size of this effect. Okay, so I reshaped our pot or vase. All I want to do is basically give this thing a bit of thickness, extrude it, not individual. So we get kind of like an entire extrusion mesh. And you probably already know this, that the extrusion doesn't leave our like interior, right? We're going to flip faces. We're going to join these together and then to get rid of overlapping vertices, again, merge by distance. And to make it look a bit better, I'm going to set shade smooth. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. That's basically pottery. But the question is, how do we take this thing and fracture it in a procedural way? Well, what I'm thinking is if we go all the way back over here before we did our extrusion, if we fracture it here and then do the extrusion later, it should all entirely work out. I'm going to delete geometry. And for the fragment map, this is where Voronoi texture shines. If we take our pot and we look at the color parameter, you're going to see that it kind of divides into segments. That's going to be a bit more obvious the more geometry we add. You can see we get these nice fragments. And to make this simple for us, instead of the F1 calculation, we're going to do distance to edge, which you can see basically does what it says it does. We take this, we make it the selection, and I only want to delete faces. And right now it's deleting everything, so I just want to make a bit of a threshold. So delete when it's greater than some number that we can kind of hone in. I'm going to make it a less than. And now we're getting these fragments that should literally be separate. And we know this because if we try to like scale elements or something like that, each one scales individually. And maybe try to bring this in a bit more so the gaps aren't as big. But let's try feeding this into the extrusion and viewing that. And now we have a shattered pot. And basically the rest of this is materials and kind of cleaning this up. I'm going to set material using our default material. In the shading workspace, go to world. We're going to have to use what comes with Blender, which right now is a sky texture, no HD rise or anything like that. And there we go. We got our lighting. I like to bring up the amplitude, add a bit of air. This is our hoo-hoo pot material. And there's a couple things we can do to make this thing look archaic and old. The first thing we can do is just pick colors that makes sense, right? Dark, orangish, red, depending on how old it is. This is perfect as a start. And what's really going to make this look old is kind of like corrosion and dust. The Mayas wanted this pot to be in the Smithsonian. This is what they wanted. So I'm going to use a noise texture for this. So that's what the color ramp is for. I'm just going to up our detail and add some roughness. So it really kind of looks like this thing is aged, meaning we can now mix two colors together and mix this with kind of like a darker color that's uh, staining this. Okay, so there's our damage. Let's kind of add more layers to this. One immediate thing we can do is we can also use this map we made through a a bump node to generate some normals. So just connect this to the normal. That's immediately going to give us some like surface detail. The roughness should be pretty high because it's very, it's very old. It doesn't have much reflectivity to it. Is we're going to add a bit of subsurface, which you can see makes the light leak through. Obviously that's too much, but if we make this kind of a reddish orange and I bring down this effect significantly, and this is just going to add a bit of like life to this. It's not like perfectly vibrant. Enter the ambient occlusion node. Basically creates an ambient occlusion map. It tells us where there is self-shadowing, which is important because this basically isolates the cracks. If I make this kind of like higher contrast and bring down the distance a little. And this is useful because we can mix this again. It's going to be slow on your computer. Just get used to that. I'm going to make it like a really, really dark red. And also we can add detail for free by connecting our normal also to the ambient occlusion. Another thing we can do is we can distinguish fragments from each other, which we could do using like islands and stuff like that. But remember, we have this Voronoi texture from before. And if I duplicate this and bring it back to F1, has this kind of like attribute from the uh, Voronoi we can use. In other words, we can store named attribute. I'm going to bring 
in the color. We only care about like one axis of it and I can call it fragment. We call this one fragment and view it. Well, why is this useful? We can use this to kind of change the color and some other parameters. So I'm going to do a hue saturation value and we can connect this to the value, which is going to control how dark things are going to be. So this is without and then this is with and I can also process this through a white noise texture. The reason to do this is it's going to give us a different map. It's just like a random number generator and we can use this for the saturation. So it doesn't look like they're perfectly synced up. One other thing I want to do is I want to give the impression that this was kind of molded in a kind of like ancient old technique kind of way. Because again, you have the pottery spinning and you like put your fingers through it, which will shape it. But it's also going to leave behind these like line artifacts. And what I'm thinking is we bring in a wave texture, which is going to look like this kind of weird, but we make it the Z axis. So it's going vertically. We bring up the scale. We add some distortion and randomness. And now for our bump node, all I need to do is add this contribution, which is going to add some height. And my MacBook Air, which is definitely the computer you want to be using it with a blender. But uh, my MacBook Air is struggling to render these, but you can see that there are lines adding some like lifelike factor to this. But I just want to add one more thing that will really take this over the edge, right? So if this is a fragmented pot that is somehow staying together, very high likelihood some of those fragments are gone, right? Unless they literally found all of them and put them together. So when I delete this geometry, I'm going to delete geometry again. But this time I want to do it for entire fragments. Remember, we have this color map that I can run through some kind of threshold, let's say like greater than like 0.6. So only 40% of them are going to be gone. Connect that to the selection. And now you can see it gets rid of entire fragments because it does it here. As we bring this closer to one, we're going to have less and less fragments missing. And you can take a look at this. And if you don't like the look of it, you can always just kind of like change the seed for this super simply by like making this like four dimensional. You want to make sure you do this for both. And I'm going to make a parameter for our W that is our seed in texture land. And as I increase this, it's going to change and get rid of different fragments. I want to make sure you have all the details. I'm just going to include one more thing inside the shading. I also want to add dirt specifically on the ground because allegedly this would have been on the floor or on a table or whatever. And that's where it would accumulate a lot of dirt. Actually, maybe let's just use generated coordinates because that will start down here. Whatever you want. I'm going to take this and process it through a color ramp. We actually want to have it inverted so that the bottom is white. And to distort this, so it's not like a perfect like line of dirt, I need to distort the coordinate system. You take a noise texture using the same coordinate system. We connect our color. And now you can see this is a nice procedural way to break up the layout, where as we add detail and we add some roughness, uh, this is going to look like it makes more sense, which we can include. OK, so I think that's doing the opposite of what we want. So I'm going to subtract, also clamp, and let's see what this gives us. Kind of hard to tell. If you want this to render a bit faster, turn off the subsurf and immediately it renders blazingly fast. Is it worth having subsurf? That's up to you. And yeah, I mean, the rest of this was just kind of like a display. I made a cube over here that basically had a, a glass texture. All of that stuff is pretty simple. So I just wanted to leave you with how to make the kind of the innovative or hard part of this uh, tutorial. So there you go. That is day nine. Tomorrow we're in double digit. As always, link in the description to get the blend file. You join the Patreon, you get 30 days worth of blend files that are harder than anybody else is making. And yeah, tomorrow's thing is maze. I believe. So maybe I'll make like a maze solving algorithm or something like that. Anyways, that's it. Hopefully tomorrow I use a better mic. See ya.